Uh, guten Tag, Sophia. Hello. Good morning, Mikael. Good morning. Today we will look at evapotranspiration from CWAT-M and compare this with six globally available evapotranspiration products with Google Earth Engine. Mm -hmm. Sylvia, could you open up uh, one of the water circles from a previous video? Yes, so let me get to the folder. Okay. Notebooks. Notebooks. Perfect. I open the command prompt. I go on my folder, otherwise the command doesn't work. <laughs> Your virtual environment. Yeah. Perfect. Here we are. So we're interested in the water cycles, right? Perfect. Great. Here. So this simulation was from a three month period from January to the end of March. Yes. I think we can see it from here. Right. So January, March 28th. This is a, a wetter season in the Danube Basin. So we see as the inputs or the blue colors are on top, the inputs are greater than the outputs, uh, plus the change in storage. Mm -hmm. Of the outputs, uh, depending on season, depending on basin, and depending on the length of the simulation, uh, outputs are dominated generally by downstream outflow, water flowing through the river out of the basin, uh, as well as evapotranspiration, the water passing through plants or the water evaporating from soils, also the water evaporating from water bodies like rivers and lakes. Uh, do you mind scrolling to the next circle, Sylvia, where evapotranspiration is partitioned further and how it's dealt with in the model? Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you click on evapotranspiration? So for this analysis, we'll be looking at total evapotranspiration because that's what's mostly offered from these six products with Google Earth Engine. But within the model, we're dividing evapotranspiration into intercept evaporation. That's the moisture that falls onto vegetation and evaporates before reaching mm -hmm. the soil. Then bare soil evaporation, water leaving directly uh, from soil moisture, uh, into water vapor, not passing through plants. Uh, snow evaporation or sublimation, uh, the movement from solid snow into uh, that water vapor. Mm -hmm. And we have open water evaporation, that's the water coming and evaporating from over flooded fields. Yeah, which is very, very small fraction for the Danube. Small fraction. And then transpiration. Uh, mm -hmm. Sylvia, how would you describe transpiration? Um, I would describe it as the transportation of water from the soil to the atmosphere through plants. Because when they um, do the photosynthesis, they when they open the stomata for the, the respiration, the photosynthesis, they actually lose water in the process. And this is a huge uh, part of the of the water that it's actually absorbed by the plants through the um, um, the radical system. So right. exactly, and and what yeah, also we can see it's quite a huge part of the, yeah. the evapotranspiration. And what what are stomata? They are these little um, apertures on the on the leaves of the plants where they exchange the, the gases with the, the atmosphere for the photosynthesis. So they release oxygen and they absorb CO2 through these pores. And so here we, we 
partition transpiration into the different land classes, here showing forests, grasslands, and non-paddy, which means irrigated agriculture that is not paddy, not flooded rice fields. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now the goal is to run C1M from 1901 till 2019 with the outputs necessary to compare with the products on Google Earth Engine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's find the setting file from the run, the long run from last time that created the grace outputs or the total water storage outputs. Mm -hmm. Here. Oh, Michael is disappeared. Okay. <laughs> You're back. Okay, so let's, the setting let's, file. let's confirm the dates are from 1901 to 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then let's scroll right to the bottom. Up, sorry. And capital W in the word water. And then capital B, the word body. The word? A body, B O D Y, and then capital M. L? Uh, M. M. So total ET is the amount of evapotranspiration over soils or over land. Mm -hmm. Evapor channel is the evaporation from rivers or channels. And mm -hmm. evap water body is the evaporation over lakes and reservoirs. Water bodies, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's enough. Now let us uh, run the model again. We can change the output folder or we can keep the same output folder as before. If we keep the same as before, it's going to overwrite the data, right? Overwrite the data. But in this Do we case, need it? Okay. In this case, we're actually making them again. We didn't remove the TWS. So in fact, it's fine. Ah, yes, right. Mm -hmm. It's fine if we overwrite it here. Okay. Then uh, sorry, I need to open the prompt from the main one or the thirty minutes. Yeah, from the thirty minutes. The full thirty, 30 minutes. Okay. The settings file. You have it. So I open my work environment. Perfect. Okay. So, can you help me recall yeah. the code? <laughs> uh, Python. Mm -hmm. And the location of GitHub, or the location of see what I'm on the computer. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. One Wait. underscore. See what M. Point oh. P I. Perfect. Right. Uh, then the settings file. Okay. I think if I do it like this, Perfect. yes. Minus L. Perfect. Okay. Let's go to Google Earth Engine. Mm -hmm. You'll go to the link I okay. sent you in the chat, and uh, for everyone else, the link will be in the video description. Yes, I'm have it open in another window. Yes. So I'm just copy pasting. Maybe in a new one.
Okay. Okay, could we, if you go to the very right, there's a bar that you can drag maybe to the left. Uh, ah, yeah. yes. Okay, you drag this um, more, this is fine for now. Okay, what we want to do first is upload a shape file of the Danube Basin. Right. So let's, in fact, do the same thing and pull the column open that's on the very left. Which one, sorry? In the same way that we opened up this column by pulling. Ah. Yes. I can seem to drag it. Interesting. Maybe I try to reload. Is there another way to open it? Or maybe I try to. I'm going to try something. Ah, wait. No. Oh, perfect. Maybe it was some, um, yeah. What did you manage to do? I um, reduced the window and then I tried with this. Okay. Maybe it was something with the uh, limit of the screen, I don't know. Yes. Okay, good. So now uh, let's go to assets in the new column. Mm -hmm. And Actually, you have it right there already. You already have your Danube Basin. If you uh, look. Yes. So mm -hmm. that's great. Um, yeah, can you, this little arrow, yeah, can you import into script? Here. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, could you now replace the name of table with ET region? So first, yeah, you can copy this, then delete this. Mm hmm. And we want to call this AT region. Okay. Okay. Now let's uh, click run. Okay. It seems to be working. So let's run it again, but can we collapse that first column again? And can we minimize the second column? Uh, the other way around. Make Sorry. the third is possible. Sorry, I, I, I don't hear you uh, okay. very, very um, well sometimes. Uh, okay. Can, yeah, this is, yeah, this is fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, can you click run again? Ah, yeah, now I see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the first product showing. Uh, this is average monthly evapotranspiration. Um, this from 2000 to to almost recent. Mm -hmm. From this uh, ETGLDAS. Exactly. So what is this? Is one of the products? It's one of these six products okay. available on Earth Engine, but we can find more about it. In fact, let us just copy ETGLDES and. Oh, I just. Exactly. Search for this and then search it with Earth Engine. And uh, maybe not this. Maybe this one. This yeah. one? OK. Let me go to bands. Mm. 
so in, in this product, they are showing evaporation, uh, evapotranspiration. Mm -hmm. So in many ways that C1M is also dividing them, this product also offers a partitioning of evapotranspiration, at least estimates of a simulation. Transpiration. Mm -hmm. And this is based on satellite data, yes. But all a mixture of from remote NASA. testing, climate data, and, and some model. Mm, okay. okay. If we scroll down slightly, I want to see the dates that this one's available for. We go to description. So from February 2003 to present. As okay, I guess the others products have different uh, time frames. Yeah, let's go back to the Google script or engine script, and mm -hmm. we can scroll down to see the other ones. This one's starting. Yeah, okay. this one's starting from two thousand. And so the first exercise will be similar to race in a way, but putting these six together in a single CSV and then eventually comparing all of these six lined up with the outputs from CYM. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. To download these as CSV, click on the pop-out window. Near to the time the series. Ah, exactly. This one. Mm -hmm. And the download CSV button. But this downloads only this data only. set, so I need to do for all the products. Yes. Okay. So maybe let me start from the first one so I don't mistake. Okay. Should I go on with the other? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, the last one didn't work. Okay. Maybe this is a larger region than I've used it for before. Um, we'll do this analysis maybe without this one, and okay. I, I'll work on fixing this. Okay. Could we um, check up on see what M to make sure it started? Oh, yes, of course. Important. Oh, still here. Um, could you hit the word? Could you hit enter? Okay. Yeah, it's sometimes if a, if a key gets hit while it's running, it somehow waits for input and gets stuck. But pushing enter will set it off again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I just copy them all on the same. Well, let me come back in two minutes. Uh, I catch up with you then. Okay, yes, <laughs> maybe better.
Guten Tag. Hallo. I'm still copying. So this goes wrong. Could we look at CWM one more time? Yeah, only one moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jumping in in the middle. Okay, it's perfect. Gone. It's running. Perfect. Okay. Oh, wow. This starts from the 50s. Right. Starts from 58. Mm hmm. Then probably better if I do the reverse. Right. I come back. Okay. Okay, here I am. Only these two are called the same. These were the, the second and the third. Should I name them differently? We could name them by the product name. Yeah, all of them? All of them. Okay. The script should be taking complete evapotranspiration uh, from each of these products in case a partition version of them exists. Mm -hmm. Some of these products will have potential evapotranspiration. Some will just be based on climate and won't be affected by land use change. So there's a variety of information that we're gathering here. Um, so we don't know which ones to take the most seriously uh, or the most sincerely. But the idea here is just to look at all of them compared to CYM and, and see what we can mm -hmm. learn. Okay. We look at just all of these together before we compare with CYM just to see the variety. Of course. Or the, the range. Sorry? Yeah, just so we can see the range of estimates that exist even between the products. 
if we look at a time series. You mean to create a chart? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe not the best chart. I, th I think it's fine. Maybe just um, all the lines are a bit thick, so it's hard to yeah. stand on top of each other. Is this? Ah, yes. So it looks like the estimates have a maximum of, of about three to four, uh, exceptionally up to five millimeters per day. And the valleys are the lowest values between zero and, and 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So then next step, we attach C1M outputs into here, see how they compare all with each other and with C1M. Mm -hmm. Cool. Then uh, I guess we connect maybe back in, in an hour and, and see the status of C1M. Yes, hopefully it's going to be finished. Good afternoon. Um, so C1M has finished running. Yes. Let us go to the notebooks and the, the toolkit in the CWOTM repository. Um, I shall open a new one then, the the other one, right? Because uh, I think it's yeah, open still open. open. Uh, it's open, you're right. Yeah, Perfect. it's still open from before. Perfect. Could we open Excel outputs from that CDF? And let us put it in the folder with the outputs. Perhaps this is the same folder? Uh, almost, because I have put all in uh, the new folder. Yep, OK. OK, let's, we should be. let's run this and see what happens. And with the double arrow. Could we check the settings file, the output folder in the settings file? Yeah, should be that one. Yeah, it's without the June 30 tag. Um, yes, you're right. That was from previously. Yeah, it was another subfolder. Okay. Okay, so there are many outputs in this folder and it's creating the time series, the aggregated time series for all of them, but we're just going to be interested in. Yeah, I think there are different time series in here, different lengths. One was from when we were making the water circles, so of the three month simulation, I guess, and mm -hmm. the ones we're going to take these month averages, the time series for these will be hopefully from 1901 to 2019, but we can. The Excel folder that's created. Let us go into the folder with these notebooks. Yeah, perfect. And then let's go into outputs. Great. That one was just created, right? Yes. So this see what I'm output. If we could open this. Yes. One. Yeah. 
curious. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. Ooh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. If if you zoom out, if you zoom out, um, slightly significantly. Okay. Uh, even more. Ah, uh, okay. You want to see? Yeah, if you'll see yes. the ones. So everything that's not uh, long, you'll want to delete. Oh. Okay. Oh, there are many ways around the sculpting. We we want three of the outputs. Uh huh. So we can just find the three outputs we're interested in. A mixture of sculpting, perhaps. I think this is fine. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, you know, an alternative way could be let's just take the outputs we're interested in and copy yeah, them. Alternate probably folder. better. Yeah, I think we did this last time. So we can let's close this Excel. And in that outputs folder, we'll create a sub outputs folder. I guess that's exactly what we did last time. That's where that June 30th folder came from. Yes. No, sorry. Mm -hmm. We can check the, where the outputs yep. would create. Could we organize this folder by date? Great, let us just take these last uh, six. Uh, in last fact, we don't, we don't even first. need TWS. Well, let's take it anyways. Yeah, let's take these last five from cell area to evaporate channel, evaporate water body, total ET, and TWS. Yes. Yes. Take these, or we can copy them into the folder just created. Mm -hmm. Great. Now let's run that um, notebook creating the Excel outputs on this folder. In fact, I think you can go right away to the browser that has the notebook open. Ah, uh, and change the folder. Yeah. Change the folder. Yeah, when we create a command prompt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you know the trick. Yeah, I'm starting to learn the tricks. And then this should be in the folder with the notebooks. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. So we can ignore TWS for now. What we would mm -hmm. like to do is to add the three evapotranspiration components together. Of before. Yeah, you see it like column D, column F, and column H. And that will be our total. Mm -hmm. This one? Mm -hmm. yeah. To aggregate them? Yeah, yeah, to sum To create them. a total. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, how I could uh, call it? Yeah, maybe C what M E T. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And we have the Google Earth Engine products giving us results in millimeters per day, average in the month. What we have here is meter cube average. So we have to divide this by the area of the Danube. Oh, OK, like last time, yes. Exactly. So within brackets, first we sum these three, and then we can divide by the area. Um, yeah, maybe I get the area first. Uh, and the area is in cell 2B. Ah, it's already there, sorry. Yes. Before, perhaps you could put it, the dollar sign just in front of the two. Okay. Yes. Just to be sure. And not not there, but in front of the um, the B. Ah, the B two. Oh, um, yeah. Sorry, of course. Otherwise. Hmm. Okay. OK. Ah, and one more thing. We have it now in meter per day. So to get it in millimeter, let us multiply this by a thousand. Now to compare with the results from the six or the five products from Google Earth Engine. Mm -hmm. OK, so we need this. The date. And the rest. OK, then I would. Create a new Excel page mm -hmm. So this was starting from January 58. Here we have it. Yes. Until June 20. Um, yeah, we don't have it. Um, should I discard it then? Everything's or? fine, yes. Oh, but we want to add the extra months in. OK. Um,
Yeah, we see if that works. Mm, no. <laughs> Wait, I will do something that then is useful also for the analysis in uh, R. <laughs> if I want to create a graph in R, it's actually useful to. Sorry. To put it in this format. Yes. Let's see if it works. Hmm. Not really. Just the last few to delete. Just the last one. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Well, then I will try something else. Okay. Oh, no. OK, can we to start off just look at maybe the last decades of overlap between all of them? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Great. From 2001, 2014. Uh, feel free to go. Uh, wait. We have. Uh, but it looks like. There's not an overlap between all of them because this ends 2014, this starts 2015. Let, let's Could it be? Let's then continue the, uh, yeah, include column G and just extend the timeline down. Okay. Until there's even one less. Oh. All right. Uh, at least, but only including C what M maybe. So till the end of 2019. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and maybe we include the titles. Or we can oh, do that later yes. also. I hope it's still right. <laughs> okay. So again, some of these products talk about absolute potential. Some don't consider land changes and are just based mm -hmm. on climate. Um, so we use these just as a, a way to understand what the range of estimates uh, can be. It looks like C what M is on the lower range of the estimates of these uh, six products. But has the okay. seasonality very clearly. 
Yes. To see what time is the darker blue. Could we make this one a little bit thicker? Yeah. Okay. I could also change the color, maybe. I, I think this is but, fine. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, okay. Could we now have? So, what do you what do you see in this? Mm, so, the pattern is the same between all of the the different uh, data data sets. Uh, the values are a bit different, but also like the millimeters. Of vapor transpiration, but also with like a consistent um, pattern, more or less. Like the the orange here, E T G L D A S, seems to be always a bit higher than the others here. And that the um, terra climate, it's always a bit lower. So yeah, there's some difference, but I guess. It's normal when they are all based on models and estimates, no? Yeah, but we see a, a, a maximum sort of just going above three, between three and four millimeters per day is the average mm -hmm. sort of monthly maximum, and then going down to about zero or half a millimeter. So yes. Um, okay, so we see the seasonality. We see uh, disagreement between the different products and. The range uh, is different between them, but again, they, some are doing potential. So we, we see they're all within the same magnitude and, and giving a seasonality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Could there's we look maybe at, here some. Yeah, this terra climate. Yeah, terra climate is a bit more. Um, More peaks, more. Uh, less consistent pattern. Compared yeah, to less the consistent other. pattern. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, can we look at the same figure now, um, but from 1901, and then including the range, whatever exists for the different data sets? Mm -hmm. So for the whole yeah. time frame. There's one extra. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Maybe this one. Yes. Uh, this gives the yeah the area. I don't know if you can see well. Well, it's not. I think this, I think this figure is actually funny. This is a compounding figure. This is not a line graph. Ah, uh, yeah, because also the the eye right. goes much, much higher. No, okay, wait. Um, yeah, maybe I select it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could just lighten up some of the mic before. Maybe see what M can stay. Yeah. Okay. 
pattern. So the pattern from 1901 to 2000, uh, I guess I was looking forward to seeing some of this decadal or 20 year seasonality that we were seeing in the gray signal. But we see in evapotranspiration, we don't necessarily see that, at least uh, not so obviously. So uh, in fact, that's yeah. mm -mm -mm. interesting finding that it's not. Uh, um, I mean, there's something. Right, I think you can see something, right? It's, it's just not as, as obvious as it was. No, basically. no. No, definitely not as obvious. Yeah, there's more consistency. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So this was a comparison of C1M with uh, five, in this case, evapotranspiration products available on Google Earth Engine, uh, with looking at evapotranspiration from 1901 to 2019. Awesome work, Sylvia. Thank you. Uh, was cool. very nice, as always. As always. Okay, then, uh, yeah, wish you a nice day. Thank you. You okay. too. Cheers. See you. Bye. <laughs> okay. So, okay, maybe let me save it. So I call it. What um the horizon? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I get the interest is to transform this figure uh, using R into an aesthetically pleasing and clear figure, clear version. Mm -hmm. of yes, exactly. We can try. Let's try. Ah, you're recording. Oh, sorry. <laughs> OK, yes. So I can delete these other figures for now if we don't need them anymore. Mm -hmm. So now this file is structured as we created with the date in the first column, the CWOTAM data in the second, and then the other data set. And I would just put an underscore on all the spaces because I always feel like it's better. Okay. So first thing, I would save it as a CVS file, comma delimited. Mm -hmm. Then I open um, my R project. I think this script, yeah, remind later. Did I save the script? Sorry, just a moment. Hmm? Mm, yes, should be. OK, maybe we can use this one. <laughs> On the first one. OK, so. Um, well, we can just copy paste. This on a new one. OK. 
Okay, first uh, I select the working directory. So the um, folder where the data is, in this case, it's already there. Then I upload the libraries that I'm using for this. So the main one is ggplot. I don't know if you know it, Mikhail, for creating uh, graphs in R is one of the, the best one that um, allows to, to personalize a lot of the graph. And uh, the other are themes for like um, adjusting the data or having nice themes or nice colors. So are just addition to, to the first one. So first thing we need to adjust the um, file because um, ggplot unfortunately requires our data to be in one column. And then um, if we have like in this case, different uh, observ observation, they need to go in another column as groups. So what we need to do is to read our file. And just copy pasting the name here. Then as you say, we can provide all the codes. I read it. And then I set, so right now the date is uh, read as character, but we need it to uh, be read as date in order to, to work later for the graph. Then we can transform, um, as I said, all the data under one column named source. So this how it was before, the file that we created. This how it ends up afterwards. So we have the date in one column and all the data in this other, the, the, um, yeah, the data in the third column and the source as, uh, um, as a group label in the case of different observation for the same date. Then I just can try this script. So let's see. Mm, I think it was this with the VRDs. So X date, Y data, group source, color source seems all fine. Oh, I have just to put X2 because we are using X2. I change. Maybe a thing mm -hmm. See what I'm comprising. Uh, epsilon is evapotranspiration in millimeters, right? In millimeters per day. Mm -hmm. Per day. Iteration in. Okay, I try. Yes, we got something. Okay, we probably need to adjust the, <laughs> the thickness of the lines sure. and uh, everything. Maybe I can already geometry line. I can say 0.5. See. Yeah, so this is this can be the first step, and then we can uh, uh, this can be personalized, um, like everything, thickness of the lines, uh, the the um, size of the um, labels, the the colors of the background. We can have it as you like, Michaeline, black uh, <laughs> background. <laughs> 
or dark background with the uh, uh, bright colors. But yeah, we can provide the, the, the script for all of that. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, wishing you a nice afternoon, Sophia. Thank you. You too. Cheers. Cheers.